On the News Roundup today, Eastern Oregon, Kyle Dodd speaks with EOU Vice President Tim Seidel, as well as Andrea Camacho about the Pierce Library possible name change. And Brent Clapp chats with District 2 Republican nominee for Congress, Cliff Bentz. And lastly, a conversation with Heidi Ho and First Baptist Church about the recent COVID cases. This is the Thursday edition of the News Roundup, brought to you by EONI and Grand Ronde Hospital. Thanks for tuning in, Eastern Oregon. I'm Bree Troutman. And I'm Bob Cavanaugh, and welcome to the News Roundup. For our first story, EOU's Pierce Library may undergo a name change. Some proponents of the name change claim that the current name could be seen as controversial. Walter Pierce, whom the library is named after, may have had some questionable issues that could be interpreted as racist. A group of students and faculty assembled and presented a 14-page report after more than a year of research to EOU President Tom Insko. Based on the findings of this report and community testimony, the governing board at EOU will convene on November 12th and make a decision. Kyle Dodds, our sports show host and program director, talked to Vice President Tim Seidel and EOU students Andrea Camacho about the report. Take a look. We got involved in this project because uh, over the years, uh, really probably going back uh, into even when I was a student here um, in the 80s and, and even since then, students and faculty had often questioned the appropriateness of the name of the library. And uh, we received uh, formally um, received letters from our faculty senate, from our student government and from student organizations asking that the university um, seriously look into this. I put in quite amount of time into this committee. Um, you know, we have hour and a half long meetings sometimes. Sometimes the meetings go from like one to two times like a week, a day, not a day, sorry. One to two hours like um, every other week, every other month. It really just depends on what the schedule looks like. But it's been, I've been in the committee for two years but three years, this name change has always been on my mind. I'm a senior now at Eastern Oregon, so um, my whole time here, it's just been me thinking about um, the name. This story has been brought to you by True Value Hardware on Jefferson Street. Be sure to catch the full interview on Facebook and YouTube. Cliff Mentz is in the final stretch of the District 2 Oregon congressional seat as the Republican nominee. Cliff stopped by our EO Live studio Tuesday to talk with Brent about Cliff's life, his career in politics, and the upcoming election. Check it out. I can't imagine a more divisive time. I mean, in your lifetime, can you imagine a time that has been more divisive right now? People, you know, and, and I guess the, the question is, are you prepared for that? What do you think about that? How are you gonna function and operate in that atmosphere? Well, at the risk of showing how old I am, I'll tell you there was a divisive time. It was called Vietnam, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, the, the I was going to school here during those years, and the the last part of the war, and the nation was completely divided, as you may recall, or we, mm -hmm. you're probably yeah. too young. But the the point is, um, the the nation was split apart because mm -hmm. of Vietnam, and so and the cities were burning uh, during that period of time. It was it was it was a difficult time. Uh, the, so I, I don't want to say I've seen it before, but I was, I was pretty young during that period of time. But uh, these, 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 things, these things happen. The great thing about this country is that I think most people recognize that at the end of the day, it's on each of us uh, to try to make it better. And, and if, you, if you think about it for a while, who else is going to right. if, if we don't? So to me, this is an opportunity. Uh, and uh, to go in and, and try to help address these really difficult issues. This story was brought to you by Brother Bear Cafe on Adams Avenue. Catch the full video right here on EO Alive. Speaking of elections, the Union County Clerk's Office has a new ballot counting machine, which will increase the efficiency for counting votes and help ensure your vote gets counted. The Union County Clerk's Office held a special presentation demonstrating how the new counting machine works. Take a look. So today we have um, our new ballot counter machine, it's the 450 from ESNS, and we've ran our zero total, so we're going to go ahead and start our process. This is something that we've done a hand count, a machine count, and we kind of go through every scenario we can. 
And even on our machine here, it'll have zero ballots done, and then we will start our batch. You hear that printer over there? Every button that is pushed on the machine logs on that printer. So as you go through, you'll hear that printer go off as well. The story was brought to you by Northwest Furniture and Mattress. Watch the full video either on our Facebook page or YouTube channel. Remember, ballots are due by November 3rd at 8 p.m. From now on, ballots must be dropped off at the official ballot drop-off sites as the deadline for mail-in voting has already passed. Also, we spoke with Robin Church, our Union County Clerk, and she's reported that Union County has turned in 50% more votes today compared to 2016. Now that's a total of 8,375 votes turned in as of Tuesday. That is remarkable. It actually is very remarkable. Unfortunately, around 200 ballots are being returned to voters because they did not sign or perhaps there were, there were other issues. Robin and her team at the clerk's office are reaching out to those voters to help them correct the issues. Well, Bob, I certainly hope they can get those straightened out. Mm -hmm. Recently, Heidi Ho Preschool and Kindergarten has had some COVID cases. Heidi Ho and First Baptist Church are working with CHD to do everything they can to help prevent further spread which does include a two-week closure of the school. Here's a quick look at a remote interview with First Baptist Church and the Heidi Ho staff. We had our first positive case um, within staff, and so we knew that that was definitely a possibility and it wasn't just an if, but when. And so we had been working diligently to have plans in place for when that happened, what to do. And so it began with um, 18 students who were directly in contact with uh, that person and so that staff member and so at that point we isolated um, immediately that staff member went home the next day um, all of those parents uh, once we got that positive test result back we immediately contacted all the parents right then and uh, ask them to begin quarantining their students. And so that was the plan um, from the beginning and uh, just following through on that. Well, uh, one thing led to another last week and we had another uh, staff member test positive on Friday, um, which then led to exposure in a lot bigger groups. This story has been brought to you by True Value Hardware on Jefferson Street. The full interview has already been uploaded to both our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Be sure to check it out for more information. A few weeks ago, we streamed Grand Ron Symphony's latest performance, A Night In with the Symphony. We will be releasing the three songs featured on the live stream individually here on EO Alive. Next, we have Dodsey with another sports segment. What is up, Eastern Oregon? This is Dodsey with your news roundup, sports update. We have a baseball game coming tomorrow. EOU baseball will scrimmage tomorrow at 315. Dodsey here will be on the call. Um, it's They're encouraging people not to come down there. Uh, they'd much rather you watched it on EOU's website or it'll be streamed here on Eastern Oregon Alive's Facebook page. Um, if you have to go down there, please park out, you know, left field, right field, stay in your cars. They're 
they're really uh, trying to keep people from uh, co-mingling. So just watch it online or come down in your car, stay in your car, watch it. I'll be on the call though for the for the live stream, and uh, it's it's going to be fun. I mean, I we don't have a roster uh, with numbers yet, so that's going to be kind of challenging. But I'm excited about it. So pay attention tomorrow, three fifteen. I sat down with EOU women's soccer coach Jacob Plucker. Here's a little sneak peek. So I was a military kid growing up. My dad was in the Coast Guard. He was a rescue swimmer. So uh, we traveled around quite a bit. And the one thing, you know, we, we all, I always had was kind of soccer whenever we moved somewhere else. Um, so I always knew that I wanted to stay involved and connected in the game. Um, and I, I knew from about my junior year in high school that I really wanted to um, coach at the collegiate level. Um, more so than say like the high school or club, just because you get to kind of be your own GM and go out and try to recruit those prospective student athletes. EOU women's soccer player, Morgan Farrington. We sat down, we chatted it up, talked a little bit about our goals and about what the goals for the team are. Take a look. At the end of the season, I hope to be back in Alabama fighting for that national championship. Last Every year we progressed to get farther and farther and this last year we made it to the final eight. So why not make it to the finals? Like we, everyone wants it on the team. Everyone's thriving for it. We're working hard at practice and it's just a overall goal that we all have and we all want to succeed. The LeGrand High School girls soccer team uh, scrimmaged Baker yesterday. Uh, they had a they had a live stream going through Baker Bulldog Nation, and we tried to share it out here on Yo Live. They, I think they ran into a little bit of trouble. The last time I checked, the score was seven to one, so I'm pretty sure LeGrand won that. There's not really much else going on sports wise in the Valley. I mean, small schools are still doing their thing sports wise. Uh, Pay attention to upcoming shows, though. I'm going to bring you the best in interviews with coaches, players. And then Wrestling Wednesday last night was a hit. And, dude, seriously, the next show is going to be fire. LeGrand High School Hall of Fame legend Burl Miller will join us on the next Wrestling Wednesdays. That's all I got for you, Eastern Oregon. This is Dodzy. From Eastern Oregon Alive Sports, and I'm out. This story was brought to you by Brother Bear Cafe on Adams Avenue. And here's Bree with another canine friend looking for a forever home. Take it away, Bree. Hey, EO Alive, Bree Troutman here with a special friend from Blue Mountain Humane Association. I have with me today Cinch. Cinch is a between one and two year old Border Collie Australian Shepherd mix. He's just a pup. He's not quite sure about this studio, but he's a good boy. He responds to basic commands. He gets along well with other dogs. He just got fixed and he does good with kids. So if you are looking for a dog that uh, you're willing to put a little bit of time into, he is gonna need a little bit of training, but he's a good guy and he will make a great addition to your family. So if you are interested in Cinch, give Blue Mountain Humane Association a call and let them know. This pet segment was brought to you by Rock and Sons Tire and Auto Repair. Well, that's it for today, Eastern Oregon. I am Bree Troutman. And I'm Bob Cavanaugh. Be sure to tune in next week for the News Roundup.